Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Mining Weekly editor Martin Creamer joins me today to unpack the latest in the mining industry. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Ashley. To start off, can you tell us about the potential for South Africa to create a new industry uh, through energy storage? Yes, we've got to go for the sun, we've got to go for the wind, but those are intermittent. So you've got to store the sun energy at the right time and the wind energy at the right time. Now, that storage, we are pole positioned to create it in the long duration storage. Why? Because we've had vanadium. We've been producing vanadium for decades. We've got this opportunity to use the storage metal, vanadium, for long endurance and easily recyclable. It's just, it's the best on, on the, on the, uh, and the biggest. So what we're saying now, you can actually get into the manufacturing mode for this. We know that there are four processing plants for vanadium in the world. We've got three. We've got three of them. We've already heavily invested mm. there. There's already investments in East London for electrolytes. There. There's already investment f into hybrid microgrids to show what this can do. Then on top of that, we've got platinum grid metals and a thing called green hydrogen. Now, green hydrogen is electricity in waiting. So also, when you've got that excess, you've got that excess of sun, you've got that excess coming wind, you create the green hydrogen, you store it. You can store it for a day, a year, 10 years, anything you like. It's got an infinite storage. Whereas, of course, you know, you can't store green electrons for that long. So you have, you've got these two worlds where you can put your green electrons in the uh, vanadium-based long-endurance storage battery, which crea could create an industry for us. And then you can put the green hydrogen, the molecules, the green molecules, into your existing systems. Mm. So where else in the world... <laughs> Are people so well positioned, but you need the leadership to create this industry. It's there for the waiting. Now, Anglo American says it's progressing towards stretching its sustainability targets. I like the fact that Anglo American, under the new leadership of Duncan Van Blatt, stressed the sustainability situation because when you look what's happening in Chile, you realize that, brother, if this climate hits you, your mining is finished. You know, we see these droughts there cutting the supply of, of copper drastically. Mm. We see floods elsewhere, you know, <laughs> where you don't get platinum group metals and still water because of the floods. We see floods around the world. We see droughts around the world. And we are confronting and looking climate change tragedy right in the face. And it is great that these CEOs see the necessity to move fast here. Uh, you know, make sure you've got the sustainability program up to date. You, you are decarbonizing and even, which is very unusual for a mining company, going partly into the process of commercializing a truck, you know, which is going to make a massive contribution. When you look at, you know, the, the emissions that all these mining mm -hmm. trucks have, it's substantial. If you come in with a green hydrogen solution, it will cut emissions drastically. And you know, I'm sure Anglo wanted to showcase this, but they realized that you know, th the urgency is such that you've got to partner with something to get these in the market to make it meaningful, and, and that is a big contribution they're making, and I'm very glad about that. Lastly, Martin, Kumar Iron Ore has seen a good six months with its sixth fatality for year, as well as increased export sales. I mean, firstly, six years of fatality-free mining is incredible in the South African situation. So well done to them, six years. But then, look what's what, ha what is happening in the market. How the market values our iron ore. Mm. They can see the quality of that iron ore. And that quality is also related now to climate change because the better the quality, the less processing takes place, the less, less energy, the more you get out of it. And there's potential for green iron ore to become green steel. They're paying a 15% price premium over the period of the six months for our iron ore coming out of the Northern Cape, our lumpy ore. I mean, that is a fantastic benefit for us. And, and we're lucky to have this Northern Cape, which I think is where Australia was 30 years ago, Western Australia. We have got potential there to create huge mining industries, particularly with the critical metals coming up. So this is an example of the quality that Kumba Iron Ore has got there. And the market looks at it and is prepared to pay 15% more. So well done to them. Thanks for speaking with us, Martin. Great pleasure, Sashni. That's it for today. 
Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Mining Weekly daily email newsletter.